Crossroads Media. The Phillies ruined me. They ruined me. I'm still not over it. I had to watch the Rangers win the World Series last night, and they beat down the Diamondbacks in five games. That Diamondbacks team stinks. I cannot believe you lost to them. You had two home games at Citizens Bank Park to get yourself to the final series, and you blew it. You absolutely blew it. I will think about this until I'm dead. I will be in my casket. My family will be walking through the funeral home, and they will be seeing me in an open casket, and they will know that I'm thinking about the disaster that was in 2023. It's heartbreaking, but what I want to do today is get a pulse out there. I want to get the pulse of the Philly season now that everything's wrapped up. And uh, I asked the question on Twitter. I have some calls and some text messages on the text board. So I want to know out there, how do the Phillies fans embrace what was? Mm, We're about one week removed from the season being over, and I'm in no better place now than I was the night of. It's disgusting. What's not disgusting, quite frankly, it's the complete opposite, is HelloFresh. You know I am obsessed with HelloFresh, and that's because it made me the greatest chef of all time. A crazy schedule can make it easy to fall back into your din- dinner time recipe rut. So keep meal time exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from every single week. So there's something delicious to discover with HelloFresh. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned and ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step recipes. Cards. How easy is that? HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout, so that means you get easy home cooked meals on the table and more money back in your pocket. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Broads and use code 50 Broads for 50% off plus free shipping. That's code 50 Broads for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. The only good game was game one. Game one had some juice. Game one had an iconic moment. It had a memorable moment. But that's about it. Other than that, it was a joke. A joke of a series. Nobody watched it, as I said it would be the case when the the series was wrapped up. uh, The NLCS, that is. And you saw which two teams would compete for the trophy. And for anybody out there saying, how could you ever imagine in a million years this Phillies team that went dead quiet, that couldn't make noise whatsoever, how do you think that they could compete with that Rangers team? And my argument is very simple. Because Texas did not face Zach Wheeler, did they? Am I missing something? Was Zach Wheeler on the mound? One of the most historic, dominant pitcher in the playoffs over the last couple of seasons? I'm sorry, I don't think Arizona has that. And I don't know what version of Aaron Ola we were going to get, but if he was on his A game, he can back that up and support Zach Wheeler as a number two very well. And now we're looking at a Ranger Suarez. Instead of bullpen games like you saw Arizona throw out there, which got annihilated and abused, they put up crooked numbers in back-to-back innings. It's 10-0. I don't care what the game ended up. Oh, Arizona showed fight. Shut up. They got embarrassed, all right? They got absolutely waxed. I don't want to hear it for a damn second. Zach Gowan sucked all playoffs long. Oh, but the no-hitter had it. Shut up. Zach Gowan is not Zach Wheeler. He's not. Aaron Nola and Ranger Suarez is throwing th- his whip out there like it's uh, a Sandy Koufax, all right? So it's not the same two teams competing. Yeah, their offense was unbelievable, Texas that is. You're just ruling out what we were able to throw starting pitching-wise and how much of a difference it is than Arizona. It's night and day. It's night and day, and with the Phillies' offense, you kept hearing this, right? Oh, the Diamondbacks, they manufacture runs. That gets you nowhere, okay? Bunting your third hitter. If I'm in a World Series game and Bryce Harper lays down a bunt, I rip all my hair out. That is garbage. Giving up outs. They had so many issues 
hitting with runners in scoring position, right? Well, how about you don't give up outs and you give yourself more chances to thrive? Bunting over, it's loser baseball, and you can't win that way. They're an 84-win team, a couple games over 500. It was a disgrace that they made it as far as they did, and there's no one to blame except for the Phillies hitters. It's not about their approach that's problematic. It was the lack of execution because they were doing the same things leading up the game six and game seven. They were playing with the same approach. They were executing better and not swinging out of their shoes on pitches that are off the plate in such horrendous spots. They just needed to pick their selection better. The idea of mashing, Texas was scoring runs left and right. All right, and it's not as if Alec Bohm had a billion home runs this year. He had a lot of RBI. He had a nice amount of home runs this year, but he was a key contributor to scoring and he was a key contributor to getting runs on the board. He wasn't hitting 40-plus home runs. They could do it in other ways. JT can hit a double in the gap. Hell, Nick Castellano started off the year just putting up doubles left and right consistently, and that was all he was doing. They have the ability... Even Trey Turner. Trey Turner is not some home run hitter. He's an average guy. He just started to swing like a three-year-old playing baseball in the backyard when your father throws it underhand and you're teaching him the concept for the first time. It was because of a lack of execution, and it sucks because they were so close, and I thought they could have beat that Texas team. They have the firepower to do it if they just played the right way, and they lost it. They lost the the the, the ability to see the baseball coming out of the hands, and they were just swinging out of their shoes. It makes me sick. It makes me sick. So uh, did I watch the World Series? I dabbled here and there. If the Rangers were up, I would have it on my television. That's how it was for me. I couldn't stand watching Arizona play with the lead. They are a joke. Now, my buddy hit me up, the one that I mentioned all the time from Arizona. His name's Robbie, all right? Brett Robinson, uh, he goes by Robbie. So, uh, I texted him yesterday, obviously, ripping him apart, because that's what he did to me as soon as the series was over against the Phillies. And he goes, dude, last year, the Phillies were an 87-win team. What's the difference between 87 wins and 84 wins? And I'll tell you the difference between both teams. The Phillies had star power last year. Do you see Seager? I'm just asking a question. Do you see what Corey Seager can do? Do you see what their big names did in this series? You have Bryce Harper and JT Real Muto, and there were big-named stars, Zach Wheeler. So if you're an 87-win team, but you have upper echelon elite talent at the top of the game in their respected positions, Kyle Schwarber, a known winner, a proven, proven home run dominant force. If you're an 87-win team and your roster is filled with that, especially starting off super slow, firing the manager, so there were reasons why they were in the position that they were in halfway through the year, and even though they were kind of following those same footsteps this season and didn't have to fire the manager, and then they went on an epic run, so, you know, I guess uh, we can throw that point out in the trash, but my point still stands that the reason why I look at the Phillies differently last year with just three more wins different from this year's Diamondbacks team, that, that team in Arizona does not have star talent. They got hot at the right time. All right, I'm not taking anything away from the Diamondbacks, but they stink. And it makes it hurt more knowing that the Phillies actually had a real chance to compete with this Rangers team. And even if the series went seven and they lost, I know that the Rangers... I think the Phillies are better. I I get it. I'm biased, and I love this team to death. Of course, I would think the Phillies are better. I think the Rangers are maybe a 9, and the Phillies could have been a 10. Okay? But a 9 could beat a 10. Hell, a 1 just beat a 10 in the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's how low I think of this Arizona team that you let walk into your ballpark and take 2 when we were supposed to have all the energy behind you and there's no way in hell anyone can win in that severe level of environment. Oh, dude, it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. It went 5. It went 5 and nobody tuned in. It's a joke. Which raises the question, what do you prefer? 
Would you rather be the team that loses to the eventual winner? So will it feel better if you know, okay, hey, we lost, but we lost to the team that won the trophy at the end? Or do you want them to plummet? And my answer is pretty easy. I don't want to see that Arizona team win at all. I was cheering for the Rangers. I was screaming for joy. I wanted Zach Gallon to fail so badly. Of course, he ran his mouth. And I don't care that he threw a no-hitter heading into deep of the game in Game 5. He stunk. He ran his mouth way too much throughout the entire postseason to have the results he did. It's simple for me. I'd rather the Diamondbacks suffer and their fans cry and be super sad and be upset because that's how I'm feeling and they deserve it. They're not a championship caliber team and it would be bad for the sport for that. For that garbage small ball, I'm going to bunt my third hitter in the lineup over trash to win a world championship. So I hope that puts all of it to bed, that the Phillies have to play a different way. No, they don't have to play a different way. They have to execute more. That's what they need to do. And there's a lot of questions surrounding what they do with the starting pitching. And I haven't spoke to you all since Dave Dombrowski and Rob Thompson spoke to the media for their end-of-the-year press conference. And my biggest takeaway is you better find yourself a way to pay Aaron Nola. I can't have Aaron Nola walk. There's not much out there. Clayton Kershaw, Blake Snell, Montgomery, Severino, Sonny Gray. The market stinks. Now, the only option that I think would salvage this is if Dave Dombrowski, who I claim is a very smart baseball man, pulls something out of his sleeve, meaning he calls somebody, makes a trade, use some of his prospects, whether it's I don't know, you package McAble in there. We're not going to see Andrew Painter this year, which sucks, but he's not going to be available for you. Can you go find a starting pitcher in a different market other than the unrestricted free agent? And if Aaron Nola walks, you cannot enter the season with Zach Wheeler as your one, Ranger Suarez as your two, and Taiwan Walker and anybody else slotted behind that. That is not good enough. So, you know, maybe there's a name that isn't as appealing as Aaron Nola that can go in and dominate like a Montgomery or something along those lines, but I think you have to bring Aaron Nola back and say what you will about his regular season. At this rate, I actually, while I will react and I will watch, of course, and break down every single regular season game next season, Aaron Nola showed me that when it's October, he's there. When it's October, he's dominant. And I'm willing to go through some disappointing nights on a random Tuesday in July and some nights that get me through summertime yelling with frustration over Aaron Nola's outing against the Atlanta Braves in the middle of August or something like that if it means in October he's there backpacking game one after Aaron, uh, excuse me, after Zach Wheeler throws a gem in game one that he's getting the ball in game two. I'll live with some of the repercussions, if you will, and some of the faulty games and some of the home runs that leave the ballpark in the early summertime. If it means October, Aaron Nola's in this uniform. It means a lot to me, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's needed. It'll be interesting where Bryce Harper plays. It was also asked about first base, right field, what's he thinking, where's the Reese Hoskins stuff. There's a lot that you have to start looking at with this team in regards to to the starting pitching. But other than that, uh, you know, it's like, well, what do they do from here? How do they get better? What do you do with your roster? We go spend big money, blah, 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 blah. Now, you have Kyle Schwarber, Nick Castellanos, JT, Zach Wheeler, Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, Bryson Stott, Alec Bo. A lot of this team, 98% of this team, the everyday guys, this is what it is. This is your team, and I think this team is good enough. Look, they went to the World Series last year. They just lost in epic, epic fashion in, in the NLCS Game 7. They were one game away. Shouldn't have been one game away. They should have crushed the Diamondbacks in four or five, which is pissing me off just thinking about it. There's something to this core. You have to execute better. The talent is there. It's on Trey and Nick and JT to not collapse. That's what needs to change. Oh, man. Okay. Before we continue and get to some calls and texts, what if I told you I can give you $10 right now? Would you say, Broads, thank you very much? I think you would, right? Well, what I think you need to do is get yourself to the Wells Fargo Center. Get yourself to the link. The Sixers, the Flyers. What if I told you I can give you $10, a head start, 
on getting yourself down to the stadiums. If you click the link down below in the description, TickPick, you get $10 off by utilizing my code BRODES on a purchase of over $100 or more. And if you click the link, it automatically is activated with my code. And right there, bang, you can go get your tickets. You know you're going to get the best prices with TickPick, and here's why. They guarantee it. Their ticket prices will beat any of the major competing marketplaces, and they're so confident, they guarantee it. If you find the same seats elsewhere at a better price than TickPick, you get 110% of the price difference in the form of TickPick credit. Also, there's upfront pricing, meaning that there's no more doing the math in your head to prepare for how much extra you plan on spending on top of the listed price on other sites. The price you see on TickPick is the price you'll pay at checkout. Period. End of story. So make sure... You check that out right now and get yourself to a game today. All right, let me make sure I have all my reads ready, all my reads in, in proper you know, structure. Got to structure this thing. All right, lots of tweets coming in, lots of texts coming in, calls coming in. We'll take a call here and see how uh, the people are feeling about the Phillies today. Man, so this is our... Uh topic today Phillies uh didn't think I'd be talking about them for a little bit here but uh to go on the uh question about uh how you feel after Arizona got smacked in the World Series I I don't care I I physically don't care the Phillies didn't deserve to make the World Series that shouldn't even be a question you choked you choked to a team that adjusted to you and you failed to readjust back that is the only thing that matters it doesn't matter what happened to Arizona in the World Series because who knows? If the Phillies made the World Series, it's no guarantee that they beat Texas. And it's no guarantee that they even made it a series with Texas because Texas was just on an unbelievable run. They were undefeated on the road. So it wasn't even a guarantee that the Phillies would have won at this Bank Park. So that's the issue there. Arizona adjusted in the NLCS. You failed to readjust, so they deserve credit for that. You choked. You blew it. You didn't deserve to make the World Series. And with it, and the way Texas played, they probably would have beaten the Phillies because they put the ball in play and the Phillies lived and died by the home run ball, even though how much I love the way they lived and died by the home run ball. They need to fix the way of their philosophy of hitting because Texas put the ball in play along with hitting the long ball. The Phillies didn't. But, but they can, and that's the difference where I say, I, I know they can. I mentioned Alec Bohm had a billion RBI this year and was one of your your highlighted stars of knocking in runs. Well, he only had 20 home runs this year, which is a huge step for him, and I find that fantastic. But it's not all he can do. Bryson Stott can look better, perform better. He can knock in runs. JT Real Muto can do more than just hit home runs. Trey Turner isn't a home run hitter. Bryce Harper isn't just home runs. He can smoke doubles into the gap, too. This team doesn't just hit home runs, even though, yes, they bop. And, yes, their identity is smashing the long ball, and they have the ability to, but I don't think that they do a horrendous job of, okay, they did at the end, but that's not them playing their best baseball. Nick Castellanos and Trey Turner, I've watched Trey Turner hit over 400 for a decent amount of spend. Now, that's not sustainable, and you think at some point it evens out, but with, with Trey Turner, him swinging at those pitches, he didn't do that the entire postseason. The entire postseason. So why did he do it then? If you just do what you were doing the rest of the time, there's nothing wrong with that philosophy. You know what I'm saying? There was something wrong with the game six and seven approach because for some reason they got out of what they were doing. But what they were doing before six and seven, I think, was a very successful way of winning baseball games. And they were doing that for majority of the entire season. Season. The only time they weren't doing that was when it came down to the season was on the line, and I guess the pressure got to them, and because they knew they wanted to win so bad, they held the bat too tight and started swinging unconventionally. I don't know, but like that's where I'm having a hard time trying to swallow this long-term approach at the plate. Every game leading up to Game 6, for the most part, they were doing okay, and Trey wasn't swinging like he was in that NLCS. And same with Nick. Nick was ridiculous. Ridiculous. 70 home runs in 70 games. That, that's the pace it felt like when we were watching. 
what happened. They weren't doing the same thing that they were doing before. So the approach in 6 and 7, they can't do that. But whatever they were doing before was working. And it got them to a position where they were up 3-2 to two with two home games, needing to win one more to go back to the World Series. And, yo, that long ball for Texas, it mattered. Those home runs, game one, epic. The home run, the long ball is 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 part of the Rangers' DNA. And I think the Phillies could have done that, what the Rangers were doing. I don't think it's crazy to think if they played their game that they could beat that Texas Rangers team. They weren't some unstoppable force. They're not a juggernaut that's dealing with a, uh, you know, like a historic run by any means. Very beatable team. And the Phillies, you could say, were a beatable team too if you're the Rangers, but I think it would have been a great series. That would have been a fantastic baseball series for the World Series. They're just like maybe an even playing field, and that would have been great. But a Phillies team could win an even playing field matchup against the Rangers in a World Series. You, we, What we can't do is, well, all this is projection, of course. But watching the Rangers do X, Y, and Z against the Diamondbacks, I can't just automatically assume that same thing happens against Zach Wheeler and the same thing happens against Aaron Nola. I don't know. I don't know. I have more confidence in saying Zach Wheeler than Nola because maybe Nola does throw up a stinker like he did in Game 6. That's very possible. Uh, Before we read some text here, let me tell you about my bookie. If you found a $100 bill on the ground, you wouldn't walk by it. So why are you passing up on cashing winners every weekend? My bookie has the biggest online selection of odds and contests to fill all your sports betting needs anytime, anywhere. So you could turn the sports knowledge into cash in your wallet. Bet on NFL, MLB playoffs, or play for a share of big cash prizes in the weekly blackjack tournaments. If you've been waiting for the right time to get in on the action, well, that time is now. And make your winning move today. Sign up at MyBookie and use promo code BRODES to claim your deposit match. Redeemable up to $1,000. Again, that's promo code BRODES to claim your bonus. Experience the thrill of sports betting right from the comfort of your home. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with my bookie. Okay, this is Dave who texted in, didn't watch much. Every time I turned it on, it felt dirty. So I would only watch a few pitches here and there and then bail. Decided to flip it on last night to watch the possible demise of the D-backs because of my newfound hatred for their faces. Watching Alec Thomas boot the ball in the outfield gave me three seconds of happiness. F him. Glad they got smoked. Everyone knows the Phillies blew it and were better than the Diamondbacks. Them losing changes nothing. Uh, okay, all right. I, I loved watching them fail. There, there was positivity in my life knowing the Diamondbacks got beat up as bad as they did. And that game one, I don't know, does the tune change in Texas if they lost that game one and now the Diamondbacks have two wins in the series? The game one was definitely heartbreaking. And then you also have to factor in you're throwing a young kid on the mound in game three, and Gallon isn't really that much of a dog. I got to be honest with you. He's not. And you have that bullpen game. That bullpen game blew up in their face. It's just so hard to ask six or seven relievers to all be elite on that given day. It only takes one guy. Now, it took more than one guy to blow up. But I'm just saying, it only takes one guy. And that thing just, wow. It's losing baseball. And I get that is baseball now. In general, a lot of teams have a bullpen-ish game. We do something similar with Christopher Sanchez, although you shouldn't if you're Rob Thompson because you should be able to eat maybe four innings with Christopher Sanchez, and then that gives you uh, an advantage compared to someone who's going to the bullpen four pitches into the game, which is just absurd. It's absurd. One thing on Rob, though. I think Rob's managerial decisions and his ability to stick with his guys and show the belief in the team is fantastic over 162 games. I think if someone struggles for the first 20, dude, there's 142 of these things, right? We believe in you. We love you. We know you're great. We've seen you do good things. 
keep going. Keep attacking. It'll all pan out. And over 162, we'll look at the back of the baseball card, and we will know that it falls into the mix of everything else you've done over the last four seasons. And I really don't have a problem with that at all. There needs to be more urgency, though, in a seven-game series. You shouldn't worry about anybody's feelings. The over 162 regular season thing is a different way of managing than in the, in the playoffs. And maybe Rob is realizing that as he experiences it. He did seem to acknowledge that during his end-of-the-year press conference there when the season wrapped up. There was some key words and key phrases where he has to readjust and rethink some things and all of that. So, you know, I, I do have the the faith that Rob Thompson is a sharp enough guy to recognize what I have been doing when it's a seven-game series with the season on the line hasn't done enough, and, and it hasn't done the job. So I need to tinker with some things, and I trust Rob that he can do that. His sense of urgency needs to pick up big time. The Diamondbacks came into Philadelphia with a purpose. You know what Rob's message is? It's just another game. Don't worry about it, just another game. And to a degree, I understand that, right? You don't want to do things out of character, try and do too much, which they happen to do anyway. So whatever the message was, it didn't really work because they're swinging out of their cleats every time they're up the bat trying to do too much. One team was like, we, we are not going to lose. The other team said, just another game, guys. Well, it's not just another game. It, it's the NLCS game seven. It's the NLCS game six where you just didn't even show up. See what I'm saying here? Um, I want to read some some tweets, actually. Because when I put up the show promoting what we were going to talk about today... Oh, don't tell me Elon Musk screwed screwed up X. Okay, now here we go. Vince, I'm just going to spit fire a few of them here quickly. Vince says, Arizona got hot, but make no mistake about it, the Phillies choked this series away. And just so you can get a, a, a full understanding on what I tweeted out, I said, checking the pulse pod coming. Now that you saw the Diamondbacks handled easily in five, how do you feel about the Phillies? Did you want Arizona to get smoked? Would you rather have lost to the eventual champions to justify things? So these were the responses. As I said, Vince chimed in and said, Arizona got hot, but make no mistake, the Phillies choked this series away. For sure. Jacob says, I don't know, man. It's Dallas week. So Jacob just moved right along to Eagles-Cowboys. Devin, or Devon, I don't know exactly how to pronounce this, says, honestly, I was exhausted as a fan that as soon as they lost, I just didn't care. I pivoted to the Birds and the Flyers rebuild. I need time to start thinking about them again. I'll be back in June. Okay. Brian Fritz just didn't watch it at all. I didn't see it. LOL. Lee handled easily. The Diamondbacks blew a save in game one and no hit the Rangers into the seven. Oh, the no, oh, the no hit, Erica. What, what, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a team that just got beat in five games in the World Series and were not competitive for, what, 70% of the series was not competitive? So the final game was for a little bit of time, and game one was competitive. It was a five-game series. Well, then you say, well, 50, no, no, because uh, 50-something percent of the series, is that is that a fair thing to say? Uh, like everybody else, I did not watch one second of the World Series. Well, I kept saying I wasn't watching a second, but I watched. Malik texts in, I hated this, in <laughs> this entire series. I said every day I wouldn't tune in, but I knew I was lying. Look at that. That's 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 funny. Uh, the Phillies should be champions. I'm sad. That's funny. And no name texts in, I wanted Arizona to win. It would make me feel better. The Phillies didn't stand a chance against Texas anyway. I disagree with that. How could they? The Rangers' bats would have outperformed our bats. I don't know if I agree with that. Nick and Trey swing at everything. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. I don't ever want to think about the, the 2023 season again. You know what I'm going to be thinking about every single day of my life? The 2023 season. This hurt. This hurt to do. All right, everybody, I love you to death. I just had to, I guess talk about them today because I had to watch last night's ceremony and celebration and in the clubhouse and beer flying everywhere. Should have been us. Should have been us. I love you guys all to death. You know that. Go Phils. <sighs> See you on the next one.